Hi, welcome to this NPTEL MOOC course on basic construction materials. I am, I am Radha Krishna Pillai. I will be constructing this uh, course uh, with Professor Manu Santanam. Uh, he has given one lecture before. Now, this is the second lecture and before I get into the course material, let me also give a brief introduction on our uh, research group uh, at IIT Madras. We call it BTCM that stands for Building Technology and Construction Management and we specialize in the areas of building science, construction management and construction materials. So, construction materials is the uh, focus uh, here today in this course and then uh, we have uh, five faculty members working in uh, those areas. Uh, mainly we work on cement, concrete uh, and steel reinforcement and other type of reinforcement also. So, different type of construction materials that are used uh, today uh, we are we work on those areas. And for more details on our division you can look at uh, or visit uh, www.civil.iatm.ac.in. Okay. So, again uh, before I go into the course material I would like to thank uh, the people who really made uh, you know my career and this is Professor uh, David Trejo. Uh, I did my masters and PhD uh, with him. Uh, under his guidance and then after joining IIT Madras, Professor Ravindra Gettu and Manu Sandhanam played a significant role uh, in uh, shaping uh, or in mentoring me, etc. And also all my other teachers during my undergraduate studies and in schooling, I would like to thank uh, all of them. And uh, my students uh, who, uh, you know, a lot of students from BTCM division who helped us in building one of the uh, best laboratory on construction materials in India at BTCM IIT Madras. Thanks to all. Now, let us get into the course material. So, what is the objective of uh, this course? Uh, main objectives are two, to provide the scientific basis for the understanding of the behavior of construction materials and also to provide you guidance on how to choose a suitable construction material for various applications. Okay. Uh, now, different study materials I have used for developing this course. Uh, these are different books which we used and also a lot of information you will see uh, in this course which are from the internet, various sources in the internet. Uh, so, it is not just following just one book and you know, so a lot of information has been put together uh, in this course material. So, for today's uh, outline, we will look at first the history of construction materials and why do we actually study construction materials and their behavior and what are the three different levels of information uh, about uh, various materials. And then we will also talk about durability, life cycle behavior, life cycle cost, etc. of construction materials. So, this is for uh, today's lecture. Now, uh, construction material, the, well, the science and engineering of it and it involves the use of basic science in the understanding of how a material will behave. That means, we will even go into the chemical bond, molecular structure, microstructure, etc. of the uh, material. So, that is like you know we will look at chemical uh, structure and then also uh, how a material behaves, uh, you know, when you talk about a stress and strain behavior, that is also very important to understand. And then once we know the stress strain behavior or, you know, let us say thermal expansion or uh, thermal conductivity, how the material behaves when it is applied uh, uh, either a mechanical load or an environmental load. So, that is something very, very important. And when a material is experiencing uh, a mechanical or an environmental load and his its behavior could be very different depending on the uh, type of applications or depending on the place where the material is used, etc. Now, how do we engineer a material so that uh, it is able to withstand both the mechanical and environmental loading which is coming on to that? Now, how do we engineer and that means engineering is a verb here and how can we control its properties 
so that the material is is being used in uh, do in the structures or uh, material is able to withstand such loads uh, while in service and also when i say while in service we should also think about the from the cradle to the grave concept that means uh, when a material is unearthed or it's uh, manufactured or processed from the uh, soil or ground through various manufacturing procedures and we put that into the structure and until that structure degrades or the life is over uh, and we will even probably dispose the materials uh, back into the earth. So, all that have to be considered while we choose a construction uh, material. Now, let us go into the history of construction materials, little bit on history, uh, which is first, uh, you know, we used to make houses or buildings, etc., using timber, even today in some places of the world that is being practiced depending on the climatic conditions and availability of the timber. And also, we use a lot of stone, um, used to use, even today we do that. Now, in 20th century onwards, like we have been started using, we have started using cement concrete, asphalt concrete, steel, polymers, composites, etc., glass, various type of materials are in use uh, in today's construction. Now, one question which comes is like whether all these materials are better than the one in the past. Maybe not, not always. Like there could be some properties which we enhance, but some other properties might um, not be enhanced or it might be, uh, you know, uh, less also. So, we have to really see what is that property which you want or what are the properties which you want from a particular material system and the material in use is actually able to provide that or not. For example, in some cases, strength may be very, very important. In some other cases, for ex uh, you know, maybe some other properties like uh, uh, you know, thermal conductivity may be more important. So, you have to see and uh, but without compromising the strength. So, you have to see when you talk about a material selection, all, other, all the properties have to be uh, considered before we choose. Now, material research can solve some of the problems or you know, if you have an issue, it can uh, develop, uh, help in developing new materials and technologies. One example which I am uh, saying here is, let us think about clay, the old homes, the people used to use clay, but it was probably not strong enough to make multi-story buildings, etc. So, we started making concrete and then in concrete itself, we, you know, started uh, making concretes with or, uh, you know, the concrete with very, very high strength. For example, the few decades ago, if you think about concrete, you would probably talk about a concrete with a strength of 10 MPa or something around that. But today, when we talk about concrete, we talk about easily M30, M40, even up to M100. Uh, M here is like, you know, the, uh, sorry, 100 MPa plus concrete. It's M is the characteristic strength. We will talk about that later. And then in terms of the metals, if you use, uh, if you talk about metals, you know, earlier we used to have, uh, you know, iron and then people made cast iron, then they found that cast iron is very brittle. So, they made steel which is more ductile than the cast iron. So, this evolution of these various metals, it evolved. I and mean, now today you have numerous type of metals available which have various properties, you know, which can cater to various requirements of the uh, industry. So, like that materials research is very, very important when you talk about even in civil engineering uh, construction. Okay. Now, why do we need to know about the science and technology of material? Because the behavior of material systems depends on the properties at both macro and micro level. So, microstructure is very, very important and also the macro behavior, how the material systems are put together, that is also very, very important when we talk about a behavior of a building, for example, or a bridge, for example. Now, various information at different levels have to be brought together to give the foundation for materials technology which is needed for uh, practice. Practice when I say uh, a material like you know which is used let us say bridge, you use steel and concrete to make the bridge. If the bridge has to perform 
uh, in a good way for long period of time the properties of the material steel has to be good the properties of the concrete have to be good and also the uh, when they put together steel and concrete as a composite system that the system also have to uh, perform uh, very well and meet all the requirements. Now, for this to achieve the material testing, how the material is processed, how it is handled and placed in the structure and also the basic science behind all this have to be very uh, thoroughly understood. Now, hen, because of all this training in the science and fundamentals must be preceding the development of new and better materials. You cannot really make a new material without really understanding the science and fundamentals behind science behind it. So, science is very very important for application which is essentially the engineering. Okay. Now, what are the three levels of information we talk about when you talk about materials especially in construction I am going to uh, talk like three level one is the information which is available at molecular level and that we can say even nano or micro level information. And then the next one is materials structure level information, not the engineering structure, but the material structure level information, which we can say mesoscale and then engineering level information, which is slightly larger, which we are going to call it macro scale. So, you can see the pictures on the right side, the molecular level and then when you talk about stress strain behavior of a particular material, material that is the uh, material structure level information an example and then also if you are talking about a beam or you know how a beam will be made out made out of steel concrete system how it is behaving that is all about engineering level. Now, I will talk one slide each on these three levels of information. In molecular level you can see the uh, sketches and images over there. Uh, we are talking about atomic bonds, we are talking about lattice structure, crystal structure of metals. So, on the right side you can see an example which I am showing for clay where uh, you know you can see different layers you know clay materials typically are layer type materials and then how it is uh, when you look through a microscope how it will look like that is what is shown on the bottom right. So, other examples of this atomic level or molecular level information are are the type of chemical complexes which are present. For example, in concrete you have calcium silicate hydrate which is the binding agent in cement concrete system. And in terms in uh, when you talk about wood you have cellulose molecules which are essentially a key player in the uh, which influences the properties of wood and polymers composites etcetera. Now, the physical structure and chemical composition can explain material properties and the evolution of materials over a period of time. One example is let us say you are talking about concrete and when concrete uh, becomes hardened or it continues to react and you know from the day one after some days it will evolve, evolve the properties will evolve, the strength will increase, the pore structure will get more refined. So, a lot of chemical reactions happen when we mix cement and uh, water together. Okay. Now, how these uh, you know strength, pore structure etc is changing over a period of time uh, can, uh, can be a very good information to determine whether that particular concrete can be used for a particular application or not. Especially if you want to talk about a structure which will last for 100 years of life, we need to know that the uh, quality of the material will be so good at microstructure level and based on that we can say whether that structure will last for 100 years or not. So, a lot of science uh, goes behind this. Now, when we talk about material structure level that is the second level of information I mentioned and it can be considered as a composite of different phases which interact to give the total behavior. So, picture on the right side you can see a clay brick. Okay. So, how the clay materials so are uh, you know when they uh, burn the clay like you know you heat it up. So, there are a lot of chemical reactions which happen and the uh, the final product or the uh, uh, the hardened uh, brick uh, that will uh, you have you can look at how the microstructure of that is how the uh, different sand particles or clay particles they interact they bind together all that we can 
look at and of course you know clay made in one place is may not be same as in another place or if you don't uh, you know heat it properly you will not get the properties which you are desiring so there are a uh, lot of uh, you know chemical reactions are involved in the making of uh, clay and if we know the type of clay materials which are used and the type of processing like the heating treatment etc which are being used which each uh, clay, uh, you know, uh, each location, I mean, the entire clay brick, uh, how they experience and uh, how the reaction between various phases uh, or various material elements within the clay system, how they react, how they behave, how well they are bonded together, all that can tell us what could be the strength of the clay, uh, the, the brick and how that brick will behave, whether it will behave in a very brittle manner or, you know, how much strength it will have etc. And you, the third picture on the right side as uh, the bottom right corner you can see the interface you know you also talk about when you talk about a clay brick wall you also have to worry about how the mortar in between each brick they are you know uh, uh, bonding uh, or binding the clay bricks together as a single wall unit. So, all these interfaces how uh, the properties at the interfaces are that is also very very important in addition to the interface between the various particles within the clay. Okay. Now, uh, the phases and interfaces can often be tested and then behavior can also be modeled. Now, the third level which we talk about uh, engineering level is called engineering level. I am also clear taking an example of bricks here because that is what we have been talking. So, and probably you are more familiar with that also at this stage. Now, consideration of the total material normally taken to be homogeneous and continuous and then size of the representative, when you talk about engineering level, you need to understand what is the size of a representative unit. Now, here the representative unit is not just one brick piece, but a small area of the, uh, of a brick wall where the brick which is used the mortar which is used all play a role in the behavior of that panel which you see on the top right uh, you know image uh, this this image here you can see that it is not just one brick which is being tested so they make a panel of a uh, brick and then apply some load on it and then see how that brick wall element or a representative unit of a brick wall is going to behave now, once you understand the properties from this representative unit, then you can actually even model uh, uh, on a uh, sing, you know, as you see on the bottom right, there is a testing which was done on a structure itself. So, to see how the structure as a whole will behave. So, all this can be done and this is where we are talking about engineering level and such information um, is very useful in designing structures for various applications. So, the point here is we have to understand how from the chemical structure level or a very molecular level, how, what type of material is used, how the different chemical and physical properties are and also at the macro level where we are talking about you know elements of size in meters etc. where for, so from nano to uh, you know uh, meter scale we are talking about different levels of information. Okay. Now, uh, let us talk about what you have to consider while selecting a construction material. So, one thing is cost effectiveness, then the desired performance for the entire life of the structure, then the elect, uh, will essential criteria that the material must satisfy from the beginning till the end of the uh, life of the structure and then uh, other application specific criteria also we have to look at. Now, cost effectiveness for the purpose for which the structure is designed. For example, you can design uh, a bridge uh, considering different material options. Okay? Now, the cost will depend on what type of material you are using. If it is a wooden bridge, it might be a different cost. If you are talking about a concrete bridge, or if you are talking about a steel bridge, the cost will change significantly. So, we have to think about the cost of the structure while we designing uh, the material systems or itself okay? or cost have to be uh, has to be kept in mind. Then the desired performance, when we talk about desired performance that means 
the material should perform adequately during the construction in service period and also during the failure and demolition phase okay so from the beginning till the end that is that is uh, from cradle to grave so the structure should or the material system should perform in a desired fashion for this entire life of the uh, structure now during this time what are those essential criteria that the material must satisfy you know we know that mechanical criteria for example strength it must satisfy the strength requirement otherwise the structure will collapse and also it must satisfy the deformation requirements otherwise there may be too much deflections for example if you are riding on a bridge uh, you know a car on a bridge you know if there is a lot of deflection you won't feel comfortable for sitting in that car so you may not want to even go on that bridge so deflection limit is very very important uh, to consider uh, or that is coming uh, from the deformation of the material it is not the failure or breaking the material into two pieces that is something to do with the strength criteria when you talk about deformation it is more of a of a elastic behavior of the material and also you have to think about the durability of the material system how long these strength and deformation criteria will be met will it be same as in year 1 and in 50th year or even 100th year so whatever is the design uh, life requirement for that entire life period you should have strength and deformation criteria if it is met so then we can say the system is durable in nature okay now also there are cases where others application specific criteria have to be uh, met for example if you are talking about a water tank water tightness is very very important in addition to the the other three criteria strength deformation durability also in addition to that the water tightness is also very very important to consider then also the material which we use should be environment friendly you cannot use a material which will cause or which will uh, uh, lead to a lot of carbon emissions or energy consumption so all this also have to be think about so nowadays there is a trend for using recycled materials or material which is already uh, you know um, you know mined from the earth already uh, used we re we try to reuse recycle uh, the materials so that it doesn't lead to uh, uh, you know significant amount of uh, you know the carbon footprint of that process is going to be uh, less and also you have to think about aesthetics how beautiful the structure looks like if you are talking about a house you want how your house to be looking very good not like a simple boxes put together and also the speed of construction in construction speed is as very well associated or correlated with the money money so if or cost of construction so if something takes 6 months to construct and uh, if a option b is going to take one year to construct so definitely we might go for the one which takes only 6 months to construct without compromising the quality so you cannot uh, pick uh, uh, you know an option where you can finish the work very fast but at this if you are uh, comp uh, compromising the quality then it is not a good option so without compromising the quality you should be able to provide or uh, uh, you should be able to complete the construction in as fast as possible now uh, when you talk about money economic factors what are the factors which uh, affect the cost of construction definitely uh, availability of the raw materials is very very important if you are talking about civil engineering construction usually whatever material we talk about we consume them in very large quantity so when we consume them in large quantity you have to think about the unit cost cost of the unit uh, material and where you can get it from and how like uh, what is the impact of having that material like the type of material the availability of the material the transportation cost of that material all this have to be think thought about and so that you can look at which is the most uh, less expensive option or an optimal uh, option uh, again without compromising the quality of the construction 
Now, how can we reduce manufacturing costs? If we can design the systems by having repetitive type of elements or similar type of element, no more, more in number. For example, brick. Uh, if you think about brick, you know, if I'm making every brick at site, it is going to be very costly. But if I make the brick, it's already, uh, you know, manufactured product, you can just order large in number. And so the cost of individual brick comes down significantly. And another example for that is precast elements. For example, if you talk about uh, uh, concrete structures, nowadays there is a lot of trend towards the uh, adoption of precast technology. That means the elements are made in some other place in a factory environment where the quality is also controlled very well and brought to the construction site and assembled at the construction site. So that technology is picking up very fast nowadays and it's a need for uh, need of the hour because we need to, uh, there is a huge requirement of significant amount of construction uh, in our country. So uh, precast construction technology is very, uh, very much essential, I would say. And also, uh, you know, sometimes uh, precast may not be possible because you cannot really transport these materials or the precast elements to the particular site. So, in such cases, you might have to go with cast in situ op, uh, option. Uh, place, placement means the placing of concrete or whatever the uh, material which we use. So, you have to see if precast is an option. If it is not, maybe you will have to go with cast in situ. Especially if you can think about a design where uh, multiple uh, number of the same type of elements, if we can design the structure in such a fashion, like example a bridge structure, uh, there are a lot of beams uh, which are used in bridges and all those beams might be, uh, can be designed in a similar fashion and we can, in that case we can actually have these beams made somewhere else, brought to the site and then just, uh, you know, only you have to do is assembly of that to make the bridge. So, that will reduce the cost by because it reduces the uh, activities at site, at the construction site, time taken will be less. So, effectively your cost of construction can significantly come down without really influencing the or at, without really uh, uh, affecting the uh, quality in an adverse manner. Now, also we have to think about maintenance. Uh, you know, if a particular material which you have selected requires uh, frequent maintenance, then in the life cycle of the structure, the cost might uh, be actually more. So, uh, when you do cost comparison across materials, what you have to look at is not only the capital, but also the life cycle cost. So, life cycle cost is something very, very important to think about. This uh, have to be uh, brought into many construction projects. So, how the choice of materials affect the life cycle cost uh, of the uh, structure rather than only looking at the construction cost. Okay. Now, when you talk about life cycle cost, I am going to show you an example which will help you understand what I am talking. Now, here you have two options. One is conventional material alternative and a durable material alternative. Now, you think about an example, uh, you know, of a shoe, <coughs> pair of shoes. You can see in the first one, this person has to repair the shoe very often. In the second option, I am going to say that this shoe is a very good quality shoe and you do not have to repair that very often. Okay? Now, look at the top half of the graph where you have a dollar CC okay? or you can say construction uh, cost with respect to a conventional material, the subscript. Uh, is for conventional material and this one and the bottom one, this is for durable material, the subscript D is for durable. Now, in case of conventional material, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times uh, repair has to be taken, I mean uh, has to be uh, done or for example, in case of a shoe, if the shoe is not of good quality okay, and you are roughly handling the shoes even same thing in the structures also, uh, you know, there could be cases where the structures experience severe uh, exposure conditions, uh, etc. So, it can start corroding, etc. So, in case of shoes, you can uh, think of an example where poor quality shoe 
or a shoe which is not able to withstand the loads which is coming while we walk. So, you have to replace this. So, at the time of replacement, you have to actually go to the shop, cobbler, you have to go meet the cobbler and then you have to get the shoe repaired. Now, when you do that process, you have to take a day off to go to the shop to get that job done, to fix the shoe and then start using it again. So, there is a, uh, you know, and on that day you cannot use that shoe and also you cannot do other work because you have to spend some time on repairing this. Similar thing can happen in a structure also. When a structure undergoes repair, you cannot use that structure on that day or during that repair period. Let us imagine a bridge. You, if there is a work going on, you cannot use that. You have to close the bridge. So, that will affect a lot of other things. Like in the case of a shoe, when you go to the shop, you cannot go to uh, go and do other routine things. So, there are a lot of direct and indirect cost, uh, you know, coming into the picture. Here we are talking only direct cost. That means, so you have to do the repair. So, there is a repair cost associated with it. So, that will be there for, let us say, every three months you have to repair the shoe. Okay. In the second option, if you go for this good quality shoe, maybe you will have to pay a little bit more money. Let us say you pay X amount of money extra. Okay. But if you do not have any repair, the first repair is coming here. I mean, no, not even uh, repair there because that is end of life. So, you have very long service, uninterrupted service. In the first case, you have to keep on repairing. So, there is a lot of interruption of the service of the shoes. In the second case, the shoe, you are able to use the shoe for long period of time without any problem. Which will you will, which one you will prefer? I would say we should prefer the durable option or the good quality shoe so that you can continuously use that shoe for long period of time. Same case for structures also. If we are able to afford the uh, a little bit of extra payment in the beginning, okay, then if you can avoid all the intermediate repairs and get like the time to first repair if you can increase, the time to first repair if you can increase, that is always a better option. And this will definitely reduce the life cycle cost because in the first case, the life cycle cost is the cost of construction plus all these repair cost. That is what is life cycle cost. In the second case, the life cycle cost is only this, that is it. There is no repair for the desired uh, you know, service life. So, when you look at these two options, you might find that going for a durable option, maybe it, will be, it is a little more expensive in the beginning, but your life cycle cost is going to be significantly uh, less as compared to a poor quality material in use. Okay. Now, again, some more things to consider while we select. I already discussed this, but I will just show this in with, in, with this schematic. So, it is very easy for you to understand. When we talk about any material, we first take it from the earth. Okay. Let us say aggregate or cement, anything which we talk about construction, it is all coming from the earth. So, you take, uh, there will be a mine, you take it, take the material and then you manufacture the particular product. Okay. In case of, let us say concrete, you make the concrete, you may have to make cement using limestone, clay, etc. You make cement and then uh, uh, using aggregate cement, etc. You make concrete and after that, you use that material or at the site and during that time, what happens or, uh, you know, you use it and then during the occupancy of the material that is exposed to the in external environment and also the structural loading. So, both mechanical and environmental loading are important okay, during the occupancy. So, because of mechanical loading, the structure might uh, you know start cracking etc. and during the uh, environmental loading, it might have some chemical actions on the uh, structure which might lead to some deterioration which might eventually weaken the material. So, it will also cut cracking etc or deteriorate. So, during the occupancy you have to maintain the structure uh, very well. If you do not maintain it is not going to have long life 
so maintenance is also very very important but during that time the material can degrade during the service so eventually you might reach a stage where you have to demolish the structure okay and demolish and build a new one okay so at that process during that time we can also think about can i recycle reuse or i have to dispose the material if i can recycle recycle or reuse some of the materials it's very good sustainable option if i have to disposal okay so you dispose back into the earth and then uh, done with it so this is the life cycle of building products or building materials various materials which we use we end up in either recycle reuse or we have to dispose the material okay so choice of materials and uh, you know how do you demolish all that should be thought through so that we can maximize the reuse and recycling of material that is today's requirement okay so to summarize we looked at, look at the history of construction materials why to study construction materials and we also looked at uh, different levels of information about material that is from uh, micro microscopic level and then we looked at the materials uh, material science uh, materials uh, level structure level and then the third one was on the engineering uh, structure level then we also talked about life cycle behavior cost durability the whole life cycle how a material be i mean uh, what are the various things to be considered uh, while selecting a material it is not only to select a material we should not select a material based on only the initial performance but we have to think about the life cycle performance so if you are designing a structure for 100 years you should choose a material which will actually last for 100 years without much of maintenance or minimal maintenance cost that way we can reduce the life cycle cost of the structure i think with that we will stop uh, today's lecture um, i would uh, be for the course material so this is something very very important and i thought i will put this in first today itself uh, which is on importance of uh, learning how to write technical reports okay or ability to technically at, uh, for technical communication and also how to do uh, you know how to make good drawings engineering drawings okay so look at this uh, photograph of a, or a sketch of a cup coffee cup how a cup you know you know you can make it 2d drawings on this and then uh, why i am emphasizing this here is uh, you know it's very very important to communicate our thoughts and ideas to other people drawing so we have to develop skills for uh, you know preparing good engineering drawings to transfer the technical ideas to other people okay and also through writing we should be able to communicate so both these are very very important means for communication technical communication through writing and through uh, drawings so please focus on these two aspects which are very very important when we turn think about in you know, a long life a long uh, in a successful career these are very important so please put some effort on that and this is a book Uh, which is which i found to be very uh, good book for this uh, learning how to write technical reports thank you